Hi class, in this lecture here we want to move into uh, chapter 4 of our textbooks looking at section 4.1 and this is called anti-differentiation. Okay, so we know we know what differentiation is, we know how to find the derivatives. So now what we want to do is we want to basically the concept of anti-differentiation is to undo the derivative. And then what we're going to see later on, not, not exactly in this section, but in, a, in, in the coming sections that there's applications of this. Okay, so what is the antiderivative? So think of the antiderivative for now as undoing the derivative. All right, so if you have a function, how do you, you know, undo the derivative here? Uh, some function f of x is a set of functions that we'll call capital F of x plus some c, I'll talk about that, such that when you take the derivative of this, Okay, so when you take the derivative of this, okay, d with respect to x, derivative with respect to x of this antiderivative function, okay, so this is the antiderivative. All right, and we know that this c here, we're going to call this c as a constant of integration, so it's a constant. So we know when you take a derivative of a constant, it's just zero, it goes away. So when you take the derivative of this antiderivative, you get back to f of x. Okay, that's that's what an antiderivative is. So anti-differentiation is often called integration. Okay, so the process of finding an antiderivative is integration. So the process of finding antiderivative is integration. All right, so to indicate the antiderivative of, let's just take f of x is equal to x squared here, okay? We write, this is the notation right here for finding. This is the notation for integration. So the, we would, we we're going to read this as the integral of x squared dx. So this tells us what variable, this dx tells us what variable to integrate with respect to. So dx tells us to integrate with respect to x. And you'll see in later on examples, you know, you can integrate with respect to different variables. Like if this had been y squared, we could integrate with respect to y, things like that. So what we're saying here is, look, if you're given this function f of x, this function here, or this expression here, x cubed over 3 plus c, this is the antiderivative of f of x is equal to x squared, okay? So this notation, the integral of f of x dx, represents the antiderivative of f of x. So more generally, when you have this, this whole expression, the integral of some function f of x with respect to x dx is equal to capital F of x plus c. This right here, this capital F of x plus c is the general form of the antiderivative of this. And the way you can check this is, look, if you take the derivative of this antiderivative, you'll end up actually just getting x squared, right? You bring the three down, it'll cancel there, you'll get x squared. So look, in the constant of integration c, okay, uh, the, the reason we tack on a constant of integration, because the, the antiderivative could be could have any constant value. It could be the number of five, it could be pi. So we don't know, right? Because when you take the derivative of a constant, it goes away. So we just slap on this extra c at the end, this plus c to say, well, we're looking for the antiderivative, and the antiderivative can have some constant with it. All right, so let's just do, let's determine these, uh, what we call indefinite integrals, okay? Indefinite integrals are of this form. Okay, anything that looks like this. In, in, in a coming section, we'll talk about bounds of integration, but when you just see an integral sign by itself, like this, Okay, and then a function dx, this is what's called an indefinite integral. All right, so later on in the coming sections, we'll talk about definite integrals. Okay, and the big difference here is you'll notice that what they'll do is they'll have numbers at the top 
and bottom of the integral. All right, so basically to go back to this example, what we want to do is we want to find the uh, antiderivative for each integrand, okay? And this is what's called find the integrand here. We want to we want to find the integral of this, okay? And so what we're doing is we're undoing the derivative. Okay, so what function has a derivative of eight? Well, that's the function eight x plus some constant of integration. And you can check that, because if you were to take the derivative of this, you would get back to this 8 right here. How about this one? What function has a derivative that's 3x squared? Well, to undo that, you know, the, you would get x cubed plus c, all right? And because you can check, if you take the derivative of this, look, you get back to 3x squared. What function has a derivative of e to the x? Well, so the antiderivative there then would just be e to the x plus c. And again, if you were to take the derivative of this, you get back to this ec right here. And then finally, you know, what function has a derivative of 1 over x? Well, we know that's the natural log of x. And so if you were to take the derivative of natural log of x plus some c constant of integration, you would get back to this 1 over x. Okay. So in all cases here, this is your f of x. And these expressions here are the antiderivatives, capital F of x. All right, so I want to show you now ways to find the antiderivatives. Like, there's, there has to be rules for us to, to find them. All right, and here are the main rules we're going to use in this section here. Okay, so these are rules for anti-differentiation. The first one is a constant. So if you ever have the integral of a constant, so a number like 2 dx, well, the way you would find the antiderivative is you would take the constant, and you would add an x to it, multiply by an x, and then you'd add plus c. Whenever you see the uh, integral of 1 over x, it's always going to be the natural log of x plus c. And this, again, this will only be for x greater than 0, right? Because we know the domain of the natural log of x is only values greater than 0. So if you're not given specifically that x is greater than 0, you'll have to put an absolute value sign here. OK, this is the most important rule. I went a, little, went a little bit out of order. And this is called the power rule. All right, so it's the integral of x raised to the n. Okay, and this is n is any real number just not equal to 1. Okay, it just, uh, just cannot be equal to, to 1. All right, so if you, um, if you take x to the raised to the n power, um, dx, you end up getting 1 divided by um, uh, n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 plus c. And I'm sorry, not, not the, I was pausing there, a little bit of a typo. It can't be negative 1. My apologies. It cannot be negative 1. Typo there. That's why I was pausing a little bit. Sorry. So uh, as long as n is not equal to negative 1, right, because then it'd be this case right here, okay? x raised to the n power, d with, and you integrate with respect to x, is equal to 1 divided by n plus 1 times x raised to the n plus 1 power plus c. So let me give you an example of this. So suppose you have the integral of x to the fifth power dx. Okay. This 5 here, this is my n. So when you integrate this, you get 1 over, so this is my n. You get 1 over 5 plus 1, x to the 5 plus 1 plus c. So this is just 1 sixth x to the 6th power plus c. And look, if you take the derivative of this, okay, you end up just getting back to x to the 5th power. And then finally, our exponential rule, this is base e. If you have the integral of e to the ax dx, so this would be something like the integral of e to the 5x dx. Okay, this is my a here, is this number in front of the x. So this would integrate to 1 over a, so this would be 1 over 5, e to the 5x, e to the 5x plus c. And you would see if you were to take the integral of this right here, you would, or excuse me, if you take the derivative of this, you get right back to e to the 5x. Okay. So what I want to do now here is just do a bunch of examples so that you can see how all this is done. Okay, so let's use this power rule here. So the power rule 
was the integral of x to the n dx is equal to 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 plus c. Okay. So let's find the, the antiderivative for all of these. Okay. So this first one, a, the integral of x to the 7 dx. Well, look, my n here is 7. So this is 1 over 7 plus 1 x to the 7 plus 1 plus c. So this is just 1 over 8 x to the 8th power plus c. All right, this one, you can just see the pattern here. It doesn't matter what the number is here. Okay, so b, the integral of x to the 99 dx. Well, this is my n, so this is 1 over 99 plus 1, x to the 99 plus 1, plus c. So this is 1 over 100, x to the 100 power, plus c. Okay, so now this one looks a little weird, because what you're going to say is, well, Matt, you never told me what the formula was for finding the, um, the integral of the square root of x. Well, check this out. So we're going to integrate square root of x dx. Well, think about your rules of exponents. Can I rewrite this as something? Yeah, I can rewrite this as the integral of x to the 1 half power dx. So now my n is just 1 half. So this is 1 over 1 half plus 1 x to the 1 half plus 1 plus c. All right, well, what's 1 half plus 1? This is 1 over 3 halves x to the 3 halves plus c. And then, you know, you have a fraction in the denominator, so it's 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Let's try this one now. 1 over x cubed dx. Well, how are you going to rewrite this? Well, you're going to rewrite this. You're going to use your rules of exponents. This is the integral of x to the minus third power dx. So here my n, my n is, is, is minus 3. So this is 1 over minus 3 plus 1 x to the minus 3 plus 1 plus c. Well, what's minus 3 plus 1? This is minus 1 half x to the minus 2 plus c. And you can even rewrite this as minus 1 over 2x squared plus c. Same thing. So when you see stuff like this, You're going to rewrite. You're going to rewrite using rules of exponents. All right. Let's do let's do some other ones just so we can just just so we can make sure we got this down. All right. So again, we're going to use the power rule. So. Whenever you're going to integrate x to the n dx, it's always just 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 plus c. So here, you can see that this is just going to be equal to 1 over 10 plus 1, x to the 10 plus 1 plus c. And this just ends up being 1 over 11, x to the 11th power plus c. Okay, this one, the sixth root, you're just going to have to rewrite this. So this is the integral of x to the 1 sixth power dx. So this just integrates to 1 over 1 sixth plus 1, x to the 1 sixth plus 1, plus c. Well, 1 sixth plus 1 gets me 1 over 7 sixth, x to the 7 sixth plus c. Now flip this, so this becomes 6 sevenths x to the 7 6 plus c. And then finally here, this one we saw whenever you, uh, you have an exponent in the denominator, you're just going to bring this up as x to the minus 4 dx. So this ends up integrating as 1 over minus 4 plus 1, x to the minus 4 plus 1, plus my constant of integration. So this is 1 over minus 3, x to the minus 3 plus c. Or you can even write this as minus 1 over 3x cubed plus c. So anything that looks tricky, 
you know, like this or this one here, you're just going to have to rewrite using your rules of exponents, okay? All right, now let's try this one. So notice that these have E's. So our rule was here, and a little bit of a typo here, exponential rule. When you integrate e to the ax dx, this is just 1 over a e to the ax plus c. Well, look, what's my a here? My a is minus 3. So this just integrates as 1 over minus 3 e, and then just rewrite it, e to the minus 3x plus c. What's my a here? So this is just 1 over a, so 1 over 1 half, e to the 1 half x plus c. So then the fraction of the denominator comes up, you flip it, it's 2e to the 1 half x plus c. Okay, uh, so here's some other rules. All right, so a constant factor can be moved to the front of an indefinite integral. So whenever you have the integral of a constant times f of x dx, okay, that's equal to c times the integral of f of x dx. So for example, if I have the integral of 5 e to the x dx, all right, so we know the integral of e to the x dx is equal to e to the x plus c. All right, because a is just 1 here, and it's 1 over 1. So what this is saying is if you have this constant, you could take this constant out, factor it out if you want to think about it like that. And then you get 5 times e to the x plus c. And what you would never do is you wouldn't write this as 5c. This is 5 e to the x, because 5 times a constant is still a constant. And then the antiderivative of the sum of difference is the sum of difference of the antiderivative. So if you have the integral of f of x plus or minus g of x dx, you can just evaluate these integrals separately. So for example, if you have the integral of um, 1 over x plus e to the x dx, what this is saying is, is you can evaluate this as the integral of 1 over x dx plus the integral of e to the x dx. And you'll get this as the natural log of x plus e to the x, and then always tack on that constant of integration at the end. All right, let's do some, some examples here. Um, and what you're going to notice as I do these problems is sometimes I'm not going to just break them up. I'm going to just work solely right through it, and you'll see how to tackle it. And then I'll do some more advanced ones, and then, and then hopefully that'll be enough. All right, so this first one, A. So we're going to integrate 3x to the fifth plus 7x squared plus 8dx. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go step by step, okay? So this one here is the integral of 3x to the fifth dx plus the integral of 7x squared dx plus the integral of 8dx. Okay, you can even factor out the constants. So it's 3, the integral of x to the fifth dx, plus 7, the integral of x squared dx, plus 8 dx, the integral of 8 dx. All right, well, so this is 3. Then we know the integral of x to the fifth is uh, 1 sixth x to the sixth, just using the power rule, plus 7 x squared we know is x uh, one third x cubed and then the derivative of, or the integral excuse me of a constant is just 8x plus c and then you can clean this up if you want um, I'm going to move it up here just to save a little bit of space so 3 times 1 sixth gets me 1 half x to the sixth plus 7 times 1 third gets me 7 thirds x cubed plus 8x plus c. OK, so this one here, what you're going to do for b here, it's a little bit trickier. You're going to actually start by breaking this, this, this rational expression up. Ah, 
now watch what happens when you when you simplify this right so this is the integral of 4 times 1 over x plus these x's will cancel plus 3 plus this x here will cancel so plus 2x cubed dx and now I'm not going to break these up into separate integrals I'm just gonna just gonna go right through it all right well constant what is the integral of 1 over x? Well, that's just the natural log of x. Plus, what's the integral of a constant? 3, so this is just 3x. And what is the integral here? Well, remember you get the n plus 1, so this is 3 plus 1 is 4. So plus 2 over 4, x to the 4th, plus c. Don't always forget your constant of integration. And then you can just simplify that. So this is just 4, the natural log of x, plus 3x plus one half x to the fourth plus c. Okay, let's just do a couple more so we, so we have a good understanding. Okay, so this one here. And this one says assume x is greater than zero. I believe this is also for this one here. That's why I just wrote natural log of x and not the absolute value of the natural log or the natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, so here. So I'm gonna just shorthand this, right? Four plus one is five. So this becomes the integral of this becomes two times one fifth, which is two fifths, x to the fifth. Plus three plus one is four, so this is three fourths, x to the fourth. Two plus one is three, so minus seven thirds. Uh, and then x cubed. There's an invisible one here, so this becomes one plus one gets me two, so it's one half x squared, and then minus five x, and then your constant of integration. Here, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to FOIL this out. So when you FOIL this out, you get x squared minus 10x plus 25. So then this just integrates as 1 3rd x cubed minus 10 over 2 x squared plus 25 x plus c. And then you could simplify the 10 over 2, so minus 1 3rd x cubed minus 5 x squared plus 25 x plus c. And then finally here, break this up, right? So x squared divided by x squared gets me one. Minus seven x divided by x squared gets me minus seven over x. And then this gets me plus two over x squared. Well, so this is one minus seven times one over x, just so you can see it plus two x to the minus two, because I have to rewrite that to use the power rule, dx. Well, the, the integral of, a, of one, so it's just a constant, it would be one x, so it would just be x, minus here, the integral of one over x, so minus seven, the natural log of x, plus minus two plus one, minus two plus one gets me minus one, and then plus your constant of integration. So this, just to clean it up, is x minus seven natural log of x minus two x to the minus one plus c. So really it's just following the rules here and you'll get a chance to practice a lot of this in your homework. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.